Hey everybody, welcome. Welcome to the Armor Conservation Lab at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I'm Adam Savage and along with Sean here. How are you, sir? Doing well. Um, you've got a male shirt. I do. I have a very clean male shirt. It's beautiful. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, when we were looking to purchase this shirt, it was completely orange from top to bottom. Rusty uh, orange. Completely rusty orange. Um, you could sort of see there was gold. You could see there was this sort of raised inscription, but it was virtually illegible. Everything was orange. Uh, I was just talking to our, uh, uh, the cur curator who, who was in charge of purchasing it, and he said when the dealer first laid it out, the cloud <gasps> of dust came, or a cloud of rust just poured off it. So this is a remarkable male shirt because I mean every am I right that I'm looking at it every ring has an inscription on it? Yeah, so every single ring has uh, some of the 99 names of Allah in it. And so there's either four or five names per ring, uh, about four different dies were used and they alternate by rows. So you'll have sort of the same die used down one row and then alternating oh my all goodness. the way through. Yeah. Um, and then that connects these just beautiful plates. Arabic inscription, yeah. uh, there's sort of a two-tone of gold going on here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you'd sort of lay the gold down, then cut through it. And so uh, my predecessor, Hermes Nauer, who was the armorer before Ted Hunter, who you've yeah. met, he spent literally months cleaning every single ring using a small wire brush. Months on end, you know, seeing the, they said the, the cloud of orange would feed up through his air extractor as he was sitting here, and he, you know, working late into the night. And once he did the outside, flips it over, goes to the inside. Uh, between all the gold, he sat there with a needle and dental tools, just picking away individual little, little In bits microscope. of rust under a microscope, oh just gosh. to get down to this surface. And now what's fascinating, so when they, when they, they were acquiring the shirt, they noticed there was an inscription in sort of a cartouche. Uh, inside of one of the plates. Okay. But then in cleaning, Hermes found inventory marks that nobody had seen before. They were completely obscured by this corrosion. Inventory marks from where? From an arsenal. And oh. the combination of that inscription and then the accompanying arsenal marks uh, highly suggest that this was a gift from uh, a prominent Mughal uh, military commander and prince named Saif Khan to Shah Jahan. Who was uh, the ruler of, of the or sorry the uh, ruler of the um, the Mughal Empire at really its height of power uh, of wealth and art and architecture? Um, so he uh, Shah Jahan is the one who builds the Taj Mahal. Oh, okay. Uh, so it's it's to honor his wife uh, Mumtaz uh, Mahal, and he is eventually himself interred in there. And uh, Saif Khan, the man who gave this gift, is actually um, he, his wife is the sister of uh, Mumtaz Mahal. So there's a family connection there too. Um, and now you, you know, some of your viewers might wonder because I, I had cleaned a similar shirt, yeah. uh, top to bottom. It taken several months. We posted photos online, and a bunch of the comments were like, "Well, why did it take you a few months? You could have just dunked it in acid, or you know, put it in vinegar. <laughs> uh, big laser cleaners would have done that in five minutes." Yeah. Like, yeah, it would have. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't know if you're a Simpsons fan, but I, I always, when I think of the like, you know, laser cleaning, I think of the, um, you know, the right way, the wrong way, and the max power way. Just the wrong way, but faster, <laughs> you know? And so, yeah, you, you would clean this, but um, if you were to put it in acid, you wouldn't just be eating away the corrosion, you'd also be eating away the good metal, be eating away all of that inscription, you'd be wearing it down, yeah. you know, you undercut some of the gold, you might lose some of that decoration, wear away the inscriptions on the interior, those engravings, which are already difficult to read, uh, they're right. not clear, wear those away even more, it's even harder to read. Um, so, so you might be making it pretty for presentation and destroying its history and provenance at the same time. Well, you're certainly destroying the history and provenance and not making it prettier. Because when right. you eat away, you're eating away that patina too. Yeah. And what you're left with is really dull surface. It looks almost like, like a pewter or like when you, when you break a piece of pot metal and it has that just that, that, yeah. that look inside. Um, so yeah, it's fast, but you're, you're never going to get what you remove back. Right. So kind of taking the time, putting in like, you know, our hope is not to just put this on, on view. Right? Our hope is for this to be appreciated as, be in, as best it can by generations upon generations, by dozens of generations. I want this when the sun's about to die to be on the ship to <laughs> space colony, right? So what's a few hundred hours weighed against that? What's a few hundred hours to do it right That's rather than I'm going to bung this in some acid just to put it on the mannequin at the end of my day. You know? I, I love that it begins its life with both value martially and value uh, uh, from its precious metals and its resources, and now its value is in what it tells us about human history and ingenuity. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I, it's got my favorite buckles I have ever seen on a thing. Yeah. These are fish, it looks like? Yeah, so uh, we, we're not sure why, but we think they have uh, a sort of talismanic uh, properties to them. Uh, or, uh, you know, like, much like the male rings. And now, something you might notice that is interesting. Yeah. So, the connecting the plates and the male rings is a very different type of male. Yeah. So, and this was even apparent when it was completely covered in corrosion. Uh, so what, we're not entirely sure what's going on here. So what we might have, because obviously you could not fit these male rings through those holes. No. Never happened. Right. So are we looking at, and these rings do have some age to them. Mm -hmm. Are we looking at, you know, the a male shirt. The as originally issued. As originally issued. Is this an older, is this a 15th century male that's then been refit because it's such a glorious, you know, stamped inscribed male? Yeah. Is it refit um, in the time of Saif Khan uh, in like the 16, in the 1630s to, to this shirt intentionally? Uh, were these together originally and then in the arsenal they were taken apart for cleaning and then put back together? Oh, and these may be really secondary. Know. Yeah. Also, mail was often reconfigured because it was so useful and versatile. Yeah, very often reconfigured. Uh, we have lots of mail that, you know, uh, you'll find European and Turkish mail that has been exported to Sudan and then stitched together in Sudan. So you'll have, uh, you know, a, a Turkish shirt with a German collar <laughs> and then local Sudanese made mail down at the bottom to fill it out to the local fashion. Uh, mail is constantly being recycled in that way, and we, we may very well be seeing evidence of that here. Is there, uh, is, it, is it possible to, to, to date these rings, given that's only a few hundred years ago? Is, is there any process by which you can accurately date them? Uh, not right now, and it would be destructive if it was. Right, um, right, right. So you're just looking stylistically and making your best guess. Mail is an area where I think it's pretty understudied, mm -hmm. and I feel that this is one of those things that we'll, we'll have we'll know a lot more in the near future yeah. as people are going through you know archives and in India and the Middle East. We'll learn a lot more and be able to date more accurately. Now, I remember the last time you were showing me the shirt you had restored. There were all these sections missing, and you had explained to me that those are actually really harmful to the piece because they cause more strain to be imparted to other yeah. parts. So it was important to replace those. I'm curious, are you? within conservation, are you guys thinking about replacing? I'm looking at several small rings missing around this perimeter. Yeah, there's a couple small spots there that maybe could be shored up. Uh, we may be sending this on loan soon, so that's mm -hmm. something we'll be considering because if if it's traveling, it's gonna go under a lot more strain than it was does just sure. sitting on a mannequin or galleries. Uh, for this one, because it, overall it's in very good condition and it's pinned to the mannequin, uh, Hermes didn't feel the need to do that at the time. Uh -huh. Certainly something we can consider, yeah. So there would be, this is something I was like occasionally I think about and I keep forgetting to ask you on camera. Like, let's say you do, are going to repair this ring, so you're going to find the right metal and you're yeah. going to actually do a riveted jump ring. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I know you guys, you're going to try and not make it look precisely exactly right, but you're just so that a future conservator could separate it out. Yeah. So what I would probably do in this situation is make something that looked very accurate but wasn't riveted. It had a heavy overlap, ah. so it's not going to just pop open on us. It's right, not just right. like, you know, ends touching jump ring. There is some overlap. Uh, and then where I have that overlap, I'll stamp an MMA mark. So it'd be sort of tucked away I at see. a glance. Right. You wouldn't you see it, un it unless you were really looking for but it. But if you needed to find it, you absolutely could find it. Because I was picturing you having to rivet these little jump rings, and then <laughs> I was picturing you having to perch this on a desk in some safe way yeah. with a staking block somewhere <laughs> way high up to let you actually do that. Oh, no, 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 well, thankfully we could use pliers for that. You know, oh, we could okay. have all with uh, depressions in the jaws allow you to seal oh. it without needing a hammer or anything like that. Amazing, yeah, amazing. But still not ideal. There's, you know, some weight here, getting yeah. something in there and then getting the tool in, not ideal. So we can find other ways to, to shore that up. Um, over the years, after you've spent all that time, uh, you know, you serially get completely enraptured with one piece for weeks sometimes. Yeah. Uh, there must be some carried emotionality. Like, you see that piece in the gallery a couple of years later, and you're just like, hey, old pal. Oh, yeah, yeah. Really? Well, because the, so now, obviously this one was worked on by Hermes, but I did one that's up in the galleries now, which is, thank God it was for a boy. So it's only 9,000 rings, you know? <laughs> and that I spent, I think, three months on. And you had to set aside, you know, uh, hour or so a day. I think I had a set count of what I had to, if I remember correctly. You know, I figured out the exact amount where I wouldn't feel the need to rush, but I wouldn't, I couldn't slack either. And then you do that, and you're just so a part of this piece for months on end. So it's not it, like you're grinding eight hours a day for three months, because well, Hermes did on this. Really? Yeah. 
Uh, I, I paced myself. I was going to yeah, say. I got, I got some good advice from him. <laughs> oh, he, yeah. don't do like I did, he said. So when you, when you work on something like this for so long, it becomes so a part of you, uh, it, it becomes a part of your history just like the friends you've had, the yeah. people you've, yeah. you've dated. You right, because like maybe your child was born while you were working on it or you moved house. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much for that story. It was really, really lovely. Well, dude, thank you. Thank you.